Okay, Robert Eagleson here with the Calgary Hook and Hackle Club, and tonight we're going to do a one feather fly in a couple different versions. So um, I'm not sure if Scott Sanchez invented this fly, but I was in a class in uh, I'm not sure where it is, in Montana, I believe, uh, where he taught the cor uh, course on several of his signature flies, and uh, this was one of them. So we'll just get started here. So, I am going to place a size 10 dry fly hook in my vise. Um, certainly bend the barb if you like. Uh, I would normally tie this, at, uh, 10 is on the far end of the scale, I would typically tie this in a uh, 12 or, or smaller. Start my thread here, clip the excess, and um, and I'm going to put in a rib. So uh, this I, root beer, or this is a rusty brown crystal flash. I'll take a strand of that, and I will just tie that in and bring that right back. I always stop at a point between the point and the barb of the hook. And then I'm going to dub a body, and um, I'm using uh, Hairtron in a uh, cinnamon caddis uh, color here. So I'll tease out a little bit of dubbing, and it's always better to um, make a thin noodle and put a little on, you know, a lot of wraps as opposed to try to clump on a heavy, heavy noodle. So I'll bring that up. And I like my bodies a little heavier, caddis bodies a little bit heavier in the back. And maybe tapered down towards the front. A little more dubbing. And I want to dub that all the way up to about one, maybe one and a half, two eye lengths from the eye. So we're getting close there now. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Let's just throw a half hitch in there. And then I'm going to take my rib and I will just counter wrap that. So. this off there. Now I need a feather so I like these hen saddles with lots of variegation, lots of uh, different colors in them. Uh, there's that tan one there, there's a, a brown one here, there's a, you know, a, a gray one here but these um, um, hen saddle haddle, hackles are, uh, are re really good for this purpose. So. I'm going to take a feather, so I've got one feather here, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip all this fuzz off the bottom, and then I'm going to measure this to my tie-in point. So I want the tip just beyond the bend there, so I'm going to think right in about here somewhere is going to be my tie-in point. It looks pretty good right there. So I've got that feather prepped now so that it's my tie-in point and then the uh, the front part of that or the base of that feather is going to be my uh, my hackle. So we're just going to hold that up there, we'll give it a couple of wraps, pull down, make sure that's seated well on the top of the fly. Then I'm going to pick this up 
sweep all this hackle back and I want two wraps towards the eye of this fly. So there's one and there's two. So there we go. Now we'll just pull those back. And we will just make sure that flies that feather is still in the middle. It looks good. And we'll clip that off. Alright. Sweep those back. Now some of these, especially these old mustad hooks, you might have a gap there with that eye, so you want to make sure you close that gap up with, with thread and then build yourself ahead. So if you think you're too far back here, you can always add a little dubbing. is maybe a bit too big so I'm just going to add just a touch of dubbing in front there find my whip finisher And there we have it, a one feather fly, and it looks very, very buggy. It looks like a caddis um, on the water there. Lots of legs, lots of movement as it sits there. Um, goop this up and it'll uh, float a long time. Even if it doesn't float, it looks so buggy, I'm sure Choke will take that as a wet fly. Now I'm going to show you a second version here, which should float much longer. Um, so same hook, I'm using a size 10. I'm going to start my thread, and I'm going to bring that right again. Doesn't seem to matter what fly, between the point and the barb. Clip the excess. So I'm using a foam body here. So I'm using just regular two millimeter craft foam. This is in a tan color and I like the flies to have a bit of a rib so I'm taking a uh, uh, it's not a real dark color I don't want the dark the rib very dark so this is a uh, what do you call this a golden rod so it's just slightly a uh, little darker than the tan foam so I take that marker and I color one of the thin edges. So I want this cut about twice as wide as it is deep here. So uh, this is two millimeter, this is roughly four millimeter, three millimeter, whatever. Um, so I'm coloring the one edge here. So once I get that edge colored, I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut that to a point, the colored edge being the longest. Here. And I'm going to hold this up I'm just going to catch this this cut edge. Make sure that's tied down very well. And then I'm just going to bring this thread all the way up to about one to two eye lengths from the eye. Another uh, half hitch here. If I can get it. Yes. Sometimes I got this camera between me and the fly and sometimes it gets in the way. So um, so as I wrap this forward now, this is the colored edge. So that's going to be my trailing edge. I'm going to use my fingers to kind of smash that foam down and wrap forward. And as I wrap forward, it makes a slight rib there with that different color of that foam. So I come 
come forward here now and I'm just going to catch that foam. Some solid wraps there and then I'm just going to clip this excess foam. And we can just kind of clean this up a little bit here and use my thread to collapse that. So same thing here, um, I'm just going to use the uh, same color of wing here, so I'll just find a similar feather, I'll pull it off, I will strip all of the fuzz from the end, so I have no, no more fuzz on my uh, feather here, I'm just going to measure again where I want this just just beyond the bend of the hook so my tying points gonna be right about there just double check yeah it looks pretty good so um, maybe I've got a little bit more gap here but again you can fill that in with dubbing so make sure that feather stays on top in the middle a couple solid wraps Grab my feather, sweep all this to the back, couple wraps around, and I'll just tie that off. Push all those hackle fibers to the back. Make sure that's tied down well. Make sure that gap is closed on the front of the hook. And same thing here. I think we'll just give that a touch of dubbing just to fill in that head. Sure, if I can, I'm done with it. Here we go. And I, oops, I will just oh, looks like my dubbing's come loose a little bit there. I'm just gonna fix that. All right, try this again. Seat that in there and give that a cut. Hang my thread up on my post. And here we go. So here is a, the one feather fly again, but with a foam body instead of a dubbed body. And um, you know, I like that little bit of rib there, and the uh, foam should make this float forever. Um, yeah, especially if you goop it up. So anyway, that's Scott Sanchez's one feather fly very very simple as you can see and um, it, it looks good and performs well uh, when you got a caddis hatch going on thanks for watching